ass kicked, you got shot, something oh. happened, you are dealing with applying self-aid. Threat, 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 threat. Threat, threat. Fight to your feet. All right, so everything will be from standing to kneeling to the seated and to what we've seen this morning as the get up position, right? We're gonna go through all of them. So whether you can, you have to use the get up with the, with the post or you can just rock up on your hip, we'll attempt to do it, uh, see if you can do it, put you through the motions. If you can't do it at all, then it's gonna force you to go to one hand on the gun. So that's the major change there. I don't really care how you get up, just realize that if I take one hand away from the gun, I've got one hand on the gun. Which is it's acceptable, you can shoot with one hand. I mean, if you can do it good and be capable that way, no problem. Do it. Um, so some people have a problem with that. Like, well, I want to keep two hands on the gun all the time. Like, That's one thing you kind of got to get away from. I'm sorry, you got to get away yeah. from this thinking like, hey, I'm going to always be comfortable. have two hands on the gun. I'm always be comfortable and be doing this. It's never going to work like that in a fight. It's never going to work like that when things are unexpected. You're going to have to shoot in a way that you not normally shoot. So Remember we kind of touched on that yesterday. Like, even when you're, you're a capable person and you're pretty effective, your instincts will say you get into a weird position sometimes, and so you just you got to put yourself in there so it's not so foreign to you when you get there, right? You're gonna move and try to get small if somebody tries to shoot at shoot at you. I don't care how tough you are. Um, so that might mean I'm getting the f out of here, and if, I, if I'm keeping a hand on my kid or my loved one or something like that because that's my first priority is us surviving, right? That might require me to do something like this, right? Maybe I can't shoot great like that, so I better figure out how to shoot acceptably well like this okay so everything starts in the knee Remember what i said windshield wiper underneath onto my butt right and right here we're going to get into different contexts first we'll start off with no gun at all right then we'll talk about drawing from the worst case scenario down on your back all right so i'm here on the ground no gun yet and i can either like i said i can rock up right leaning over that far knee you know if you can't do that physically then you won't be able to rep this out so you'll just rep the other but we're gonna to try to get everybody to go through both reps of both because sometimes I might have the ability to rock up. If somebody's trying to hold me down, you're not gonna rock up on somebody, right? You have to put a post on the ground and kind of give way to build a base. So you're way over there, Brian. I can rock up and you're really not causing me any resistance. I can come all the way up or shoot or whatever. If you're on top of me, holding me down or trying to attack me, I'm not just gonna rock up. I don't care how strong I am, <laughs> right? I tried a couple times, I'll probably get tired, but if I give way to the little base here, he's pushing in, right? Once I get my base under me, he's not gonna keep me down anymore, right? Nobody, I don't care how strong, I mean, there's techniques when people know a lot of things, but once you build a base, it's real hard to keep somebody down. So, so you notice how I can't come up, so I have to go here, all right? Also the case if I can't rock up for physical reasons, right? And if I have my gun out, me, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna opt to put, keep my gun in my right hand. I'm not gonna switch, and so I'll just go to this side versus this side, right? And there, then I can come back up to two hands. I can step all the way up. So what we're gonna do first is this. We'll go knee, windshield wiper the leg under and sit down. And then we're gonna try to rock back up when it's time. So I want everybody to go to a knee first Windshield wiper that back leg underneath and sit down on your butt. Now, as you do it, you notice some people when you do it, like if you just do this, you want to do this. I don't want to do that, right? So I know that my momentum is going to be going this way. So when I rock back, lean forward, look. See that same way I'm going to get up. Because I, I don't have time to go. <clears throat> or what if I had a gun? Like, oh, now I had to f*** that up. All right, you know what I'm saying? So come down uh, deliberately. Now you might say, well, I won't, I won't decide when I hit the ground. Well, right now we're just working through the process, so maybe we can build a system that'll take over when you're not thinking about it, right? Now lean all your momentum over that knee that's bent under and try to rock up without using your hand. If you gotta use your hand, use it. All right, so just see what you can, but you can rock up on that hand for now. Now back down, windshield wiper under. If you gotta use your hand, use it, but rock over and come up. Boom. And back. Let's do that a couple times.
All right, once you got that side, switch legs and come to your knee on that leg. Now, same thing. Let's do uh, five times rocking up, windshield wipe one under, rocking up, windshield wipe back under to your butt. Remember when you go down to your butt, try to control your momentum or lean forward so you don't just rock back, right? If I've never practiced this and I'm trying to get up and all I'm thinking about, this is scary, I'm trying to get up, probably somebody's gonna take their gun and put it down, <laughs> right? It will happen, we've seen it, right? So I need to have some idea or a plan of how I'm gonna work this shit, right? How am I gonna get up? And the good thing about this play is this is applicable to a lot of scenarios, not just me getting up in a gunfight, not just me uh, getting up in a grappling match, but me just getting up in a good way and a strong, building a strong base in general. So you can use it many different ways. Now, what if I do have to use the other hand, right? Because maybe somebody I'm worried about, I had to make some space first, so I ended up on my butt, right? And I'm trying to get the gun out, but the guy's moving, so I'm like, <laughs> You know, I'm trying to make up some space, give myself some time to do what I need to do, right? So I might end up here anyway, whether I can get up physically like this or not, right? So I might end up here and still getting the gun out or switching here, getting this gun out, right? Either way, I might end up on that hand and I need to have a good way to get up and adjust my base even under pressure. Make sense? So we're gonna work the same thing we did this morning, but we're gonna come from the knee, rock down, right? And then we're just gonna use that hand and instead of rocking up, pay attention to this part. Instead of using this hand to use my hand to push my weight up, because this is the weaker one out of my limbs, right? Legs are stronger than my arms. I don't want to push in and rock up. Get it? That requires my arm, because if he's pushing me again, my arm's going to beat him in gravity? No. So what I'm going to do is take my knee back. Not rocking in, just taking the knee back to the hand. So I'm not, I don't have to t take any space from him. I just give some space and put my leg underneath me. Make sense? So knee, rock down controlled, right? Here, and then bring the knee back. And just back up to the knee, that's it. And then we're at knee again. Rock, hand, give up space with the knee. And I'm good. Make sense? All right, so let's do it five times on the left side, five times on the right side. Rock down, get to your butt, place the hand down, and don't use the hand to rock back up. Use the hand to help you pull that knee, make that knee light and bring it back to your hand. The hand is opposite the leg that's crossed? No. Nope. Yeah, so he's asking, is the leg that's posted on the same side as the hand? No. You, it's hard to balance that way. I need a cross post. Hand on one side, leg on the other. Here we go. Anybody got questions on Let me see it. There you go. Easier that way, right? But again, we're talking about the control of the gun part is where people have problems. Perfect. Good way to give it. See, a lot of people see this and they think that I need to take up space in front of me. And yeah, that's possible sometimes, I could come up. But while we're working this, why some of you guys that are unfamiliar with this type of, of base style to get up, right? we might as well let you know the principles that are gonna help you under pressure when somebody's on top of me holding me down. Like I can get a little bit of space. I can't always push a person out of my way and I don't always want to because that's not very efficient. But I can give a little space in order to take make use of that space. Right? All I need is a little bit. In the jiu-jitsu guys wrestle, all I need is a little bit. Start wedging it in. So you can push on me all you want. The doc right here can push on me all he wants. Lean on me. Lean on top of me. Just put your chest on my, my shoulder. All right? He's pretty heavy, right? And I can't, lift, I can't lift a man here. But watch. Just dead weight. Keep your weight heavy. I'm getting up. I'm going to have to take care of this, but I'm getting up. i got a strong base now. All right? You're putting all your weight on me, right? Yeah. And that's, that goes the same for any of you guys, right? I'm just making space, so I gotta rely on that. Cause I'm never gonna be stronger than every person I ever meet. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good shape you are, if somebody's gonna be better, somebody's gonna be big and heavy, and you're gonna be tired. Make sense? All right, so last thing, 
putting that all together. What if I have to end up on my back? Maybe I got surprised. So I got to start from here. I'm never going to opt to lay down on somebody. If I can get here, I can pull my gun out without flagging my legs, right? But I might end up here because I got knocked down unexpectedly. I didn't choose to go down. Now I'm here. Now I can get the gun out. If it's lethal and I made the decision to shoot and I've got the time to do it, right? I don't have to do anything else before I get this gun out. Then I'll get the gun out here because I'll just shoot you here. I think I'm about to die. I'm going to shoot you. So when I've got that gun, now I can use two hands or I can use one hand on the gun. Now if I want to use two, I can just rock up. Just like I did from my, my butt to my knee. I just rocked up. I kind of went to one side. You see, I don't do a sit-up. You can do that. It's a little bit harder for some people, but I can also use my elbow and keep two hands on right here. Does everybody see that? So if I had a problem sitting up, elbow. Still got my gun controlled and fairly my muzzle this way, right? Make sense? So let's go all the way to your back. For some of you guys that maybe not familiar doing stuff like this, you never want to be star man on your back in an active situation, right? So my knees are always ready to bridge, push. So I got my feet on the ground essentially, and I'm, I'm getting rolling my, my shoulders towards one side or the other. If I'm flat, I'm my weakest. If I'm on my left or right side, fetal position like God created for you to be in the womb, right? Then you're a little bit stronger. So from there, you don't have to pretend you have a gun right now. I just want you to rock up to your butt any way you can. Yeah, any way you can, whatever makes sense for you. Just go to your back again and let's do that five times. Rock up to your butt, right? And do it in a way that you could, you could repeat effectively. And notice, and when you come up to your butt, start getting into that position that, like you would get up. You know how to do it. One leg out, one leg posted, right? All right, do the other side if you hadn't done that other side yet. Come up, rock onto that side. From your flat back, use your elbow if you have to, or you can use a crunch, a sit up, whatever gets you up. Everybody's different. Remember, if somebody was on top of you, you'd probably need to post that elbow on the ground. So try a couple times with the elbow on the ground. Maybe I need a little support. That elbow coming from your back kind of serves the same purpose like that knee does coming from your butt. All right, I can put it under me and I'll be able to walk my hips out and turn them over in order to build my base to come up. They say in uh, jiu-jitsu position before submission, it's pretty much position before anything, right? So in the context of really fighting for your life, it's not gonna be me and you standing on the line and like, all I gotta do is worry about this position, right? I gotta worry about how much time do I have to get this? Did I just let you know I had a gun when you didn't know I had a gun at first and now I've amped him up and he's coming at me like a madman now. I just seen a video yesterday. A cop was getting chased this guy with a knife down the road. He came after him and the cops ended up at one point during the little the scuffle the cop is straight up sprinting this way because he has no time to get his gun right now and he didn't know what to do on the ground like in that case if i'm sprinting i feel like he's catching me and he's about to cut me or something i might just sacrifice and go down maybe i now he's here now i can get my gun right the cop did fall eventually but so my point is a lot of things determine when I can get that gun out, it's not the position for us is could be moving over here. It could be grabbing you first and then getting the gun out. There's a lot of different scenarios and it's never going to be plain and simple because we're not in the old West. I don't say, Hey, you let's duel. Let's see who's got the fastest draw. Right. You usually don't have that much information before you get into a lethal situation. Usually it's contact. Somebody's up on you already. So we got to have a way to get back up. My saying when I teach class like this is I will not stay down period. I won't. Mentally, emotionally, or physically, I'm not going to stay down. Just not going to do it. If I decide to stay down, that's on me. But no, you're not going to make me stay down. And that's, I want everybody's mindset to be that way. Your mindset's like that. You're not going to keep me down. You might get me down, but you ain't going to keep me down. Make sense? So this is just a good way to, to get up. Um, so let's go from the back all the way up to the butt, all the way up to the knee. And all the way standing, let's do five times each side. 
you can rock up to your knee or you can bring your foot all the way back it's, it's up to you whatever you're capable of if you can't do a lot of those reps just do the the part that stays on the ground doc so bend the leg bend the legs uh, bend that one in bend the right leg in bend it in all right now you got them knees and you got them freaking pads on too all right now you're up on your side so this is the way it'd be a better position it's almost as if y'all have done this before yeah. all right once you got them i want everybody to come to standing All right, as we do this today, if we have you go down to the ground on your own, you're gonna do it safely, but you can do it safely with, without taking your hands up here. Like if I had my gun in my hand, right, all I gotta do is come to that knee and sit down, right? Because that might be part of the drill. I'm not just gonna have you, I'm not gonna push people down necessarily. So if I tell you to get on your back to start the drill, that's how you're gonna get down. That's more reps, right? You're just repping the same thing we just did in reverse, back down. Okay, so now we got guns. We got guns. So I want you to come to the seated position or to the back position when I tell you and then mimic getting your gun out of wherever you would carry your gun, your finger gun, right? While you're down there, remember I said keep active legs like your post, don't flatten your legs. So I gotta work around my legs as I pull that thing out. It's just like somebody's head. You know, how if I was right here and we were in a car or he's in front of me and I had to work around this non-threat towards the threat, I'm gonna be very deliberate about it, right? Can't do this, right? Look at that. Here. So if my knees are in front of me, pretend that's my knee. I'm laying on my back. Or I can move my knee out of the way and point past my knee. Or I can extend past it and bring it around, right? So just use that finger as a, as a barrel and really mind that muzzle of that barrel around your knees as you go down. So everybody to your back. In reverse, right? Knee, sit, lay. Watch the guy behind you. Flat on your back now, because you just got knocked over, right? Yep. Now I want to get my gun out, so get your gun out from your holster, your finger gun, right? Mind your legs and get your grip. Get your grip, you're gonna shoot somebody? So pretend somebody's here and they've got the f machete, right? right? You can point your finger gun at me. Bang, bang, bang. All right, just don't point it at you right now. Okay. So, right, you got your finger gun out. Now, if you can, Keep both hands on the gun and come up to the kneeling position in the way that we just taught you. If you can't, you're going to take one hand off the gun. Take your support hand off the gun and lean to that side. Come up on your elbow. There you go. Keep coming up to your butt. There you go. Keep the gun. Control the muzzle. All right. See if you can rock up to your knee or bring your knee back to your hand. All right. That's the harder one, right? Rocking up like that. Feel good with that? All right, so guns are away, back to your back. Yeah, I listen to the same class that, that you guys listen to, and I know that he didn't say you have to do a sit-up, right, when you're on your back. Like, you don't have to do that. The best Make, thing be efficient. Do is that, yeah, the best thing to do is have a plan. As you're falling down, the best thing to do is have a plan on how to get back up as you're falling down, right? So when you're on your back, how mobile are you on your back? Not really, right? You might want to, like, get to a place where you're already kind of cheating your way up yeah you're draw, you're getting to a place where you can draw a gun but you're creating something that's a lot easier the mo the motion's easier i know z didn't say do a sit up right he said you could but it's really hard or you could make it easier on yourself and get on one side or the other so that being said we know you cheat with your elbow or your knee right by bringing it back placing it under you to help post you up do you do both elbows at the same time no. just one at the same time right so that requires me to commit to one side so we're not playing guard we're not doing anything flat on our back we're trying we're getting back up at this point so I'm gonna already get over into that position to, to commit to one side right usually the side my primary or my my off hand or my support side because my primary hands doing work here right getting shit out whatever the case may be and I don't want to just go to my left hand unless I had to so Use that, don't just come up, be efficient with it. And it's gonna, it's gonna help you out too. All right, so same thing, let's do that five times. But every single time you practice the drawing from the position that you'd have and minding that muzzle, right? Go around, get your grip, act like you got somebody and you can lean over and have somebody. I can be pointing my gun at somebody 
at Corey right now. I don't have to, if I draw here, look. All right, okay, All right? He's being shot at that point. Make sense? All right, yes, sir. Yeah, I just use my left hand. Would it be safe to go like this with the firearm to get up? Well, if I'm, are you trying to shoot at me? Well, are you trying to keep the gun on me in case I, maybe you shot me. Maybe you shot me one time, draw it. Lay down and draw. Lay down and draw. All right, you shot me, you got a gun on. Boom, you shot me. But I'm like <laughs> So you're still trying to get up, right? So the minimum, the time that I spend with my gun off the guy that still may be a threat, or I'm still determining if he's a threat, I wanna limit that. So you could keep the gun back and come up on that side, as long as you can do it fast enough to get your gun back engaged in case you have to take care of that threat still, or you can just keep the gun on him the whole time. So it's really neither here nor there, but you understand the, the reasoning, yeah. right? Okay. Other, have, having that other hand able to do a lot of other things is key. A guy who's just amped up and coming at you is one thing, but somebody's savvy is another, and they might have you down and the second they see you start reaching, they're going to be cutting an angle. They're maneuvering on you. They're like cutting on this side. Now you have to shift to get to him, right? And then they may have something in their hand and now they're like when they throw something at you as they're maneuvering. So now you got to like deflect the projectile and get your gun out and get up. There's a lot of shit that we're going on. We're just building that bottom layer of the cake, guys. Bottom layer of the cake. So y'all understand what he was asking, everybody? Yeah. He's asking instead of having that gun at that, in that extended hand, can I have it back here on the elbow that's helping me get up? And I was telling him the reason why. Also, remember this, so fight in retention. So if I had somebody in the collar tire, they're trying to get to my shit and I deemed that it was necessary for me to shoot them, right? I need to shoot here and you've got certain uh, uh, stop gaps in place that keep you from shooting yourself, right? Because if I do this and I haven't trained this and I'm like, eh, eh, I'm gonna shoot my own hand, right? So there's certain ways you keep it out of the way by coming up to collar tie and angling from a touch point into the ground so I know my muzzle is locked in here, right? So if I do that from the ground and I'm locked in here, but a guy gets over top of me, is there any stop gaps that keeps me from shooting myself? Because who determines what the threat does? Yeah, they do. I don't know what the do. Maybe I thought he was gonna be all right. And then he ran up on me and it scared the shit out of me and I'm like, blow because I don't have any stop gaps because of my, my angle of my barrel's up and my hand's here. So it's not a good process. So try to get a deliberate process. So the more that we can systemize, the less we're gonna, be, we're gonna have mistakes, right? Because you're gonna be thinking about a lot of other shit besides exactly where does my barrel go, yeah. right? Bottom layer, guys, we're just drilling this hard. So it, might, it might be a good idea not to practice that. Way. Yeah, so keep it easy as possible, allowing for the default safety involved, right? That's what we want. Cause I need to, my subconscious is going to be taking over that shit. All right. So three more times from your back. You can alternate sides if you want, but I suggest just coming up with your primary hand on the gun. If you take your hand off all the way up to the knee and do it a couple more times. Yes, sir. Make sure you're drawing every time. I want you to get used to moving that mind in your legs with that muzzle. You don't have to. So he was asking me, do you have to go to a knee when I come up to the, to the, uh, from the, to the get up position? You don't have to. Again, like I said, the reason I do this, so everybody down on your back so you see, last, last point because you got this pretty good. You guys are doing awesome. The reason I, I, I modified, remember I said I modified this get up position from what they teach you in most combative arts coming here. Right, because a lot of guys just, if you're not used to it, you don't have good posture when you do it anyway. So guys start doing this, right? They go, this is bad in a real fight. Maybe you, maybe you can get away with it in a grapple match. You're still not in a good position because my, my posture's broke, but I can get punted in the face by somebody that's not playing by rules. And I can't really, <sighs> this kind of sucks, right? You're just in a bad spot. So I practice going to my knees, plus guys that have a lot of weight up here. Whether it be vest, whether it just be a big guy or whatever, they tend to be top heavy. And now you're off balance. It's just not a good place to be. I want to keep my good posture. I want to be strong in my base getting up. Does this look like a good base? Does this look like a good base though? All right, I'm stronger here. Not strong here. What's holding all my weight? That's not going to last forever. All right. So that's why we do that, Robert. All right. So. It's just easier and most people, more people, a larger group of, of people can do the knee thing versus this thing and get it right. Cool? 
All right, do it uh, one more time. Do a perfect draw, mind your knees, right? And then we'll get started. I like what Brainer's doing. Brainer, go back down. Look at him, he's shooting around the knees. Go around your knees. Look, he's moving over the knee, over the knee, over the knee. Now pick a side. Don't do a sit up. Pick a side, move that leg out of the way. Now come on up. There we go, nice. These are tools, man. As long as you're safe, right? As long as you're not pointing that muzzle at anything it doesn't even point at, you have tools to get back up and make it quicker. Right? So for the rest of the day, we're gonna start off doing some of this stuff right after we get all the safety shit out of the way, and get you loaded. Um, and then we're gonna go into the moving in width. We call it moving in width, basically adjacent other your targets this way. Pretend uh, I'm in the mall and there's a shooting and I'm like, you know, I'm Mr. Tough Guy, but I'm just concerned about getting me and my family to f So if I'm doing that, hey, let's go, let's go. But I see a guy in that, in that mall store, boom, or boom, while I'm walking. And we'll talk about that context soon. And then moving in depth, meaning moving towards a target, right? So I'm moving in my house, clearing my home. I'm going forward. My daughter's room's back there and I see the threat right here. Like, I'm not gonna stand here with you and just let you go hide over there. I'm coming in to you. Or maybe my buddy's helping me out and he's expecting me to go in because he's gonna get the corner for me. You go opposite of me, go opposite of me, ready? I'm moving forward. If I don't move forward, I'm in his way. I say go opposite of me, I'm over here, why are you, you go over there? Oh, that's what you <laughs> First CQV class, go. All right, questions on any of that? Is it too hard, too physically challenging once you placed your base in the right position? It's not bad, man, it's just being efficient. I, efficient. I got one, yes, sir. One question. Yes, sir. Question. If you're rolling over and then you're going single-handed on the way up, at what point do you transition to that single hand as far as rolling over? So if I got both hands on the gun, mm -hmm. I transition before I take that hand away, right? Is it before you roll or after you roll? Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It just depends. Can I use my elbow or do I need to go here? Okay. So, but I can be rolled over. You can look. Holding that gun in a position like yesterday, I can do that from any position. And I can go up on my head like this, right? If I could do... You can do it any position, as long as I can align the sights. This is when we're thinking about it a little bit too hard, right? Instead of just doing it. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to, when you're do, performing a reload, to take your support hand off of your gun, reach down, grab another magazine, stuff it in? All you're doing is just taking your hand off and putting it back on. You take This hand is coming off of the gun, performing some sort of action, whether it's a reload, whether it's pushing or making space, whether it's getting up off the ground, and then it's coming back and marrying up. Let's, we, we have a tendency to, on new information to start overthinking it, right? Let's just immerse ourselves in what's being instructed, right? Start to, you know, like grapple with it in your mind. Be like, okay, check. I think he knows what he's doing. And then just perform it. Immerse yourself in the action and then just do it. And I think you guys will, will just naturally flow into it. Right? If you get strong in these positions getting up, where's my wrestlers? All right? If they get good in that position getting up, it's going to be effective in a lot of different avenues as far as self-defense. If you can just get up and know that I have a base at all times if I just make give up a little space I can make a base if you can get that through your head and you can apply it under stress even if you're not great at punching not great at double legs or, or breaking somebody's arm if I can just establish a base and know how to leverage my weight against somebody just that long just to get up you created so many options for yourself you don't have to be a ninja man just be a capable citizen build a good base to layer that cake that later layer that first layer of that cake that he keeps talking about which is safety but fundamentals on that right you build that you have so many options and you're going to beat 99 percent of the world if they with you if you got that shit just immaculate i got immaculate first layer is what i'm looking for Corey. you know what i mean yeah. the top of that cake man that's just sprinkling on top as you develop hey i got those basics now i'm doing barren bolos Sometimes now I'm doing shit. Can change, man. Sometimes you scrape the icing off because you're like, shit, that didn't work. That didn't look good, right? And you can add another layer, right? Just the base has to be solid, man. If that base ain't solid, then you got no cake. And just like Z was saying this morning, you, I mean, it adds on to what he's saying right now, right? You're going to beat 90% of the people because like this morning, most of those people, they naturally take the easy way out. And building that layer is not easy, right? So we're here to, to make it a little challenging for ourselves to gain skill to perform the skill and practice it so you guys, when you leave here, are able to continue on and keep building that cake when you're not here.
And that, you know what? You're already better than, I don't know, let me throw a number, 87% of people just by showing up to a training event. You're better than most. I tell the guys new on the mats, I was like, just because you stepped on the mat today, you're already, you're already tougher than a ton of <laughs> Right? I don't care if you don't know shit versus the people in here. You came to the mat. You stepped in the arena, right? Y'all heard that saying? The man in the arena? <laughs> Bitch ass critics. Did you come out here and risk it all? Did you come out here and step on the grass on the mat? Well, if you didn't, then shut the f I ain't listening to you. I'm living. All right, questions? All right, let's go back. Um, you want them to get their guns bringing to the line? So let's do this. Boxes to the line? Let's do this real quick. Let's gun up. Everybody on this range, watch Mr. Durham. That means everybody. I don't care if you work for the oldest corporation in the world. Be watching. We're out here today. We're shooting a complete video start to finish how these things are made how they design them why they design them like they do why they're the best target on the market why we use them and of course we're visiting with the owners jared ethan and kirby and you'll get to see in that future video start to finish how it's done G, you're gonna draw fire two. I'm gonna tell you to take a knee and fire two. I'm gonna tell you to safely get to your bottom and fire two. I'm then gonna tell you fight to your feet, apply rounds as you get up or when you can. Just to my butt and then back up. Yep, and then safely holster. Draw and fire two. Take a knee, fire two. Safely to your bottom, finger straight. Finger straight, get to your back. Fight to your feet. See that little windshield whopper? See the windshield whopper? Fight to your feet. Tack mag and holster. Then the next one that we'll do, go ahead and holster Z when you're done and please get on your back. Then we will do this. So you just got your ass kicked. You got shot, something happened. You are dealing with applying self-aid. Threat, 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 threat. Threat! 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 Understood? The process of why he's down there for the context of today is somebody put him there. Or he put himself there and is having to render aid to himself. It was two different drills. We're gonna do the first one first. Ready? Get on the line. We don't have time. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. Name the book and the movie. Eyes and ears, look left and right. Load and make ready if you need to and recover to the holster. On the whistle, draw and fire two. On the whistle, take a knee. Finger's gonna be straight on the way down, eh? You guys behind, look and see if they're missing. Finger straight. This is not a tactic, this next part. This is you getting into a position to train. Safely get on your bottom. 
Remember how they showed you? If you've got, get on your bottom. Get on your bottom. On the whistle, give me two. Listen up, listen up. Finger straight, get on your back, control your muzzle. Your muzzle is not pointed at the instructor's heads next to you or behind you. Look at where your feet are in time and space. Are they flopping up when you're shooting? Shane, you should be able to grip that blaster if you're gonna shoot it. Finger on the trigger when it's safe to do so and press one shot off. Send another one when it's safe to do so. Your left hand for every one of you comes off the gun. Remember, base behind you. Didn't they show you this? I know they did. I watched it. Oh, okay. Fight. Fight to your feet. Threat. All right. All right. Fight to your feet. Listen up, listen up. That, that doesn't mean mag dump. That doesn't mean mag dump. Just a couple rounds on your way up. That's kind of like a, a meter yourself, guys. It's you dominating what's in front of you. I see it, I hit it, I'm, I'm controlling this. Listen to me, tack mag if you need to. If not, control your muzzle. Take a knee, take a knee. You've got a gun out, take a knee. If right now you were tourniqueting your, your left arm, could you set that gun down on the ground right now, right in front of you safely? It's a yes or a no. So later you may have to. Could you also holster it safely? Yeah? yeah? Think about that. What's a better option? One hand. Holster. Well, what if you're putting a tourniquet on right now? Holster. Think about that. Fight to your feet. One shot. <laughs> on a whistle, draw and fire two. Take a knee, fire two. Finger straight. Remember, separate this part of your mind. You're not fighting to get on your back. Get down on your bottom. This is you setting yourself up. Now, you could make a really accurate shot at a long distance like this using your pubic bone, so there is a, there is a skill to get down on the ground like this, right? Give me two when it's safe. On your back, finger straight, get on your back. 1911 down there. Let me see that grip. It's safe for you to do so and you're sure of the result. Press one shot off. Give me another one. All right, just like they showed you, they gave you two options. You can use your non dominant hand to form a base behind you, or if you've got the physicality, Get your ass up, fight to your feet. Your Tack mag if you need to, we're doing it again. Now remember why you might be on the ground. You might be leaking a lot of blood. What'd we say? 30 seconds till you could be to the point of a blood pressure drop that it's not fixable, even with a doctor standing there. That's shitty. In the context of all we're doing, that was your loved one, you got 30 seconds to sort it. That's why your tourniquet doesn't belong in the glove box. It belongs on you. Get to your knee. Finger straight, safely get on your bottom. Finger straight, safely get on your bottom. Check through your sights, apply two. Finger straight, controlled, methodical. Put yourself on your back. Remember, you're simulating something here. Think about this. Look at your crotch. You could be in the middle of bleeding to death. Think about what I was telling those guys. Yeah? When it's safe, give me a couple hits. 
Check it out. The last, the last iteration, some of you guys were trying to rock up, trying to maybe be a little more physical than you're currently able. Take that non-dominant hand like they showed you and make a base behind you, fingers pointing to the back of the range, not fingers pointing towards your body. Remember? Remember they told you put that hand behind you, sit up. Make a base behind you, sit yourself up. Remember you can now pick your other foot up off the ground and slide it back behind you. Remember that you guys did this this morning. Fight to your feet. Tack mag. We're about to do that. Tack mag, tack mag and recover to the holster. Look at your crotch. Imagine a volume of blood pumping out, spurting even. 30 seconds, bitches, that's all you get. Maybe a minute, a minute. We got a whole minute, a whole minute, a whole minute. What's going on in front of you? What's going on in front of you? I'll call threat. This is what we're gonna be doing tonight. Threat. Get up with the hand, fight to your feet. Give me a couple rounds. Come back to the holster. Hey, you guys can rep that shit at home. You know, you go to Paul's gym or Dan's gym or Z's gym, and that's how you warm up. You get up off the ground 20 times, 50 times like that. It's kata, right? It's just like drawing. That's dry fire. It's dry fire. You guys can do that tonight. You can push on each other. Dan's got a mat. He'll bring his mat in. You guys can around tonight. We'll videotape it. I brought two gallons of canola oil. We can make it an interesting evening. We've got a lot of prizes. Anybody that wants canola oil wrestle on Dan's mat, he'll throw in $1,000 and I've got some stickers. Cool? <laughs> Let's do it again. Get on your butt. Hey guys, on your ass. We'll do it one more time. Burn in, burn in a good rep. Who's ever heard last rep, best rep? Yeah? Who's ever heard that? Yeah? So just imagine this. We'll, I'll say this a couple times before we leave. Every time you leave the range, the last rep might be the, and probably will be at some point, the last rep you get before you have to shoot somebody to save your own life or another. Train as such. Train with that in mind. Every time I do this, I am doing it so that the one time I do it for real, I get the result I want. It's not just about making the steel ring. It's so that when a dude's sitting here kicking you in the face, you're not going to get knocked on your ass. You're paying attention. Yeah? Yeah. Threat. Fight to your feet. Come on up to the line, guys. Everybody, square up, left to right. Just let, the, let a shooter in wherever you're at. Remove the feed. Source ammunition comes out. I said I got me some guns out of gun law. Guns out of gun law, baby. Gun fight of gun law. No more gun fight of blue. Synthetic, baby, so it's gonna last you longer. So go on, carry trainer.com and order yourself some gun fighter, gun or gun fighter to get rid of your gun fighter, gun fighter. I said, go on and order yourself some gun.
Yeah!